Now let's take a look at the airbrush pen itself. This is the pen without either of the cups attached and you can simply screw on whichever cup you would like to this space just here. You'll see in the kit is included a 9cc hot pink cup and also a smaller 7cc purple cup, both of which have lids. You'll notice there's two little holes too in the lids and that allows for airflow in order that the system will work. Both of the lids simply lift off like so. So they're not a screw or unscrew, you simply lift them off like so. You can attach the cup at a slight angle. Can you see how the cup points backwards and just ensure that it's screwed on nice and tightly. If you were to change your cup, do make sure it's empty first as otherwise the colour will come out all the way out of the bottom. So that's the cups. Now then, the pen itself is what we call a single action pen and that's because it takes one action to make it work. When you pull back the trigger, that allows the colour to come out of this end. When you release the trigger, it stops entirely. Let's see what's going on inside. Take a look at this end, you'll see there are three sets of notch lines and the first one here is the crown. Now the crown not only directs where the colour is coming out but also protects the needle inside and if I remove these two parts you'll see that needle. So this here is the sheath and then this here is the needle. If I pull the trigger back can you see the needle disappear inside? and that creates a hole for colour to come out. You see how tiny it is. Can you now see why I don't recommend you use gel colours and alcohol through your airbrush? Nor that you use glitter or alcohol through your airbrush. And that you're very careful when using luster dust and alcohol through your airbrush. Because you can see now how small that hole is and it could easily block the airbrush flow. But of course, if you know how to take apart your airbrush, then cleaning it shouldn't become an issue. So this is the airbrush as a whole. You'll see at the bottom here is a connector and that connects to the hose. On mine is an easy release connector. You'll see that there's this metal barrel and that connects to this here. If I pull down on the barrel, the airbrush clips on. If I pull down again, the airbrush comes off. And you'll see it's a really easy, simple mechanism. This allows me to change airbrushes really easily. I might switch from one to another instead of changing colour in the cup, or also remove it to take it to the sink for a good clean. At this end of the airbrush is the lock. Now when it's fully open, it's allowing the trigger to come all the way back. If I were to close the lock, you'll see that I can now only pull the trigger back part way. And if I close it completely, I now can't move the trigger at all. So this will allow me to control how much I pull back the trigger, allowing the colour to come out. So it can control my colour flow. Now I don't like to use mine, I just use the control of my finger to gauge how much I pull back the trigger. But of course, it's there for you if you need it. Now let's take a look inside the airbrush. If I unscrew at this part and take the end of the barrel off, I can then expose what's going on inside. If I now pull back the trigger, I want you to watch here and here. Can you see that they move too? Now this is the end of the needle and it's fastened in place by the lock nut. And because I'm pulling back the trigger, it's forcing the airbrush pen backwards. So therefore the needle comes out of the hole and allows the colour to come out. Simples. Now the first troubleshooting point would be, if I have no colour coming out of my airbrush, the first thing I would check is whether my needle is moving backwards and forwards. 
If it isn't, it could be one of two things. One, the lock nut has come loose, which can happen sometimes whilst you're using it. And when I pull back the trigger lock, the needle doesn't move. Or two, it's become dirty, blocked and stuck and therefore isn't moving backwards and forwards. If this is the case, I would simply undo the lock nut and slide out my needle and see what was going on inside. I then give this needle a wipe and just a wet piece of kitchen paper is sufficient to clean my needle. I can now pop it back in place, carefully using my finger as a guide, push it all the way through until it comes out the other end and tighten my lock nut. I should now find when I pull back the trigger that the needle also goes backwards too. And that was a really quick fix. Let's show you what else is going on inside. If I undo the lock nut, you can see now we've got two barrels. This larger, fatter barrel here, I'm going to unscrew. And what this barrel is doing is squeezing and compressing a spring really tightly. And it's the spring that gives our trigger some traction. There we go, there. So can you see that that thread was inside here keeping it all nice and tight? And I should now look, I've exposed my spring. If I pull this spring off, there's my spring. And I'll just pull this second barrel out very carefully. It's got something attached, there we go. So can you now see the issues that we've got going on here? Because this isn't clean and it hasn't been lubricated, you might find that things start to stick and it just makes everything not work as well. To fix it, I'm going to give it a bit of a wipe. And again, all I'm using is a wet piece of kitchen cloth. I can remove that surface rust. It's not actually broken or rusty all the way through then I do need to make sure that it all goes away dry. So take a dry piece of cloth and make sure there's nothing wet. Now if I need to lubricate anything, the best thing to use is some vegetable shortening, olive oil, coconut oil, just something that is food grade because we're using this item near food. We'll give this one a little clean as well. Incidentally, these springs are the same size as what you'll find in most ballpoint pens. So should you ever have an issue with that, that's good to go. Okay, so the trigger I've left behind, that's still in here, and that actually fits down with a little brass pin down inside. If I pull that out, you'll see what I mean. So a little brass pin on a hinge. That fits down inside a hole that's in here that goes all the way through the airbrush. I'm just going to give it a little clean inside here. Not necessary for the most part, but because those parts that I've pulled out were rusting, I'm just making sure that it's nice and clean inside there. I would also then want to make sure it's dry inside there. So just give it a little dry. Of course, you could just leave it to air dry for some time. Now, we're going to put the trigger back. Now, you won't need to do this, but I'm showing it to you in case it comes out on you and you need to know how to put it back together. But please, on an ordinary basis, there is no need for you to remove your trigger. Now, you'll see there are some sets of notch lines. I want those to go nearest the cup. And you're aiming this brass pin down into that hole. And it can take a few attempts to get it right. Down it goes. There we are. 
okay? So you should see that the needle then won't go down any, the trigger won't go down any further. I'm now going to put this slider back and you'll see that it's got a little piece attached to it that sits next to the trigger. Now on my old airbrushes, this was a whole separate piece and I used to get so many emails about them losing it. So I've had it attached now. And I'm going to look at it like it's a foot and ankle and it's going to kick a ball. So if I put it in like it's going to kick a football and slide it through, you should find that it slots straight back into place, like so. I can now put my spring back on and then the barrel. Now you'll see again here, the barrel has marks of exterior rust on there and it's just because whoever's used it last has washed the whole thing and not allowed it to dry and it really will start to seize up all of the mechanisms inside. So give it a good wipe and then I'm going to give it a little bit of lubrication make sure it's actually dry and then this can go back over and screwed up tightly and just keep screwing and screwing it until it won't go any more fingers are all greasy now so making sure it's nice and tight there we go now I'm ready to slot the needle back inside and I'm going to use my finger as a guide slot that back in like so and we should see it pop out the other end Make sure that my lock nut is on nice and tight. You'll notice that there's still a little bit of thread spare at the end. And when I pull back my trigger, there we have it, my needle disappears. The end of my airbrush barrel is now ready to put on. And then the end of the airbrush where the crown is can go on like so. And that's it. We've stripped our airbrush down cleaned it, dried it, lubricated it, and reassembled it, ready for action.